guys, welcome to the lesson. Well, in this video, we'll be covering physics for grade 12 learners. That's physical sciences paper one. And we'll be covering vertical projectile a motion in 1D. And then before we get on with the lesson, let's start with the objectives uh, for this lesson. So after this lesson, I expect you guys to be able to define and understand projectiles. We also need to be able to describe the motion of projectiles. I also expect you guys to draw and interpret graphs of uh, the rate of change in position, rate of change in velocity, and also the rate of change in acceleration. So these are the lesson objectives for this lesson. So the first one, you need to be able to define what a projectile is. Projectile. And then the second one, you need to be able to describe the motion. Describe the motion. Motion of projectile. That's the second objective. I hope you guys can see this handwriting. And then the third one, you need to be able to draw and interpret graphs of the rate of change in position and also the rate of change in velocity. Let me just write graphs. Graphs. And you need to be able to understand uh, all the various graphs that are associated with the vertical uh, projectile motion. And then also, I expect you guys to remember from your previous grades, you need to remember, I'll write this on the other side. Oh, oh yeah, no, I can just fit it here quickly. I'll just squeeze it in. You need to remember displacement. Displacement. You need to remember this from your previous grade. That's from grade 11, which is the rate of change in position. Rate of change in position. That's your displacement. And then the second point that you need to remember is your velocity. You need to remember this from grade 11. It's the rate of change in displacement. Uh, uh, flip. Well, this formula is the, for velocity. Sorry, I made a mistake there. Let me just write it here. That's for velocity. That's the rate of change in displacement. And then the last point you need to remember is acceleration. And this is very important for this topic because we're going to be dealing with gravita gravitational acceleration. Uh, this acceleration, rate of change in velocity. Also remember that uh, whenever they say rate of change, they're talking about something divided by time. You understand? That's when you, you're talking about rate of change. Uh, now moving right along, let's plot the graphs. Uh, the graphs of velocity, acceleration, and displacement. And the graphs here. Graphs that are extremely important for this topic. So now the first one, we need to plot the graph of displacement. Let's just use Y because we'll be talking about displacement in the vertical direction or in the vertical axis. So let's just use Y for displacement. So we're gonna plot a graph of displacement versus time. And then we're gonna get something like this here, as it cut is in play. And then that's a straight line where you have your displacement on that side. And then you're gonna have time on the X axis. So now from this graph, you need to remember that the slope of this graph, the slope of the displacement versus time graph represents your uh, velocity. This is your velocity, the slope of your displacement time graph. And then now this means that your, your, your displacement will be equal to, that's the gradient or the slope multiplied by the time. So from this you, can, you will know that your displacement is, is equal to <coughs> the, the velocity, this is the velocity represented by m by the, by the slope or the gradient multiplied by time. So you need to remember that always. And then now let's move on to the second graph, which is going to be the graph of velocity versus time. And let's see if we can squeeze it down here. It's going to be a graph of, or let me just make some more space because I feel like this space is too small for the second graph. Uh, I hope you guys have copied all this stuff that I'm erasing now. And then I'm just going to make some space for the last two graphs that we need to draw. All right, all right, all right, okay. Yeah, well, the second graph is the one for velocity versus time. This is our second graph. Yeah, this is the time on the x-axis and then velocity on the y-axis. This is the graph of velocity uh, versus time. So, and also another uh, important exam tip, you guys need to remember to give your, give your diagrams titles in, in your exams. You need to, you need to name your, 
your feet, your graphs or your, your diagrams in when you're writing your exams. So just like I did here, this is the graph of velocity versus time. This is very important. There are marks for this for this uh, part here for, for naming or giving the title. So now from this graph, we're gonna get a straight line also. And then the slope of this straight line represents your acceleration. So the slope of, a of your velocity versus time graph represents the acceleration, which is the rate of change in velocity divided by, oh yeah, it's the rate of change in velocity, which means that it's velocity divided by time. And then also you need to remember that acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So you're gonna get this from your velocity versus time graph. That means now this straight line will be given by the equation which says velocity equals to m, which where m in this case represents your acceleration, which is the slope, multiplied by the change in time. That's what we have now from this graph. Now the third and last graph that you need to look at is the graph of uh, velocity versus time again. But in this case, we'll be considering the area of this graph. Let me just draw it here quickly. The same graph, but in this case, we'll be focusing on a different, uh, or at a different angle. So now we're gonna have a straight line there, this velocity versus your time, velocity versus time graph. The same as the one that you drew here on the left hand side. But in this case, we'll be focusing on the area of this graph, or the area of the, of a triangle. In this case, so that means now the area will be equals to half base multiplied by height. So from this graph, you can see that this graph forms a triangle with the x-axis. So now the area for this for this uh, or for this triangle that's formed here represents our our displacement. This is the displacement represented by the area. Uh, from our velocity time graph. So that's the displacement. So we can further write it uh, like this, the area of base multiplied by height. That's the area of a triangle. So we're using the area of a triangle in this case because this straight line, if you can just project it to the x-axis, it's gonna, it's gonna form a sort of a triangle here and then you, for us to get this, this area here, we need to use the formula of uh, area of a triangle. So you need to remember that. And also, this can be written in terms of half. Our base is the change in time, so that's on the x-axis, and the height is the change in velocity, so we can run it like that. So you need to remember uh, this important concept when you, when you go into your exams. Now let's move on to some definitions that you need to understand in order for you to solve vertical projectile motion problems uh, successfully. So now the first definition that we're going to look at, remember in the lesson objectives I told you that we need to, or you need to understand projectiles or what a projectile is. So now a projectile, which is the first definition, projectile, this uh, is an object that travels through the air, while gravity is the only force acting on that object. You understand? So it means, for example, if you throw a stone upwards, and then it comes down again, uh, ignoring the effects of air resistance, that object or that stone will be referred to as a projectile. So any object that travels with only gravity acting on it. So for example, this is a stone. I'm just dropping a stone maybe from a certain bridge. There's a bridge here at the top. Uh, I hope you guys can just try to imagine this bridge. Use your imagination there. This is the bridge there at the top. And now, there's some water there below. There's the water below. This is the water. And then this is the bridge. So now in this case, I'm just giving you guys an example for you to be able to understand uh, what we, we, we mean when you talk about projectile. So now this stone here, yeah, falling from the bridge into the water, it's going to be referred to as a projectile if we ignore the effects of air resistance. So now we also need to talk about a certain concept, which is free fall. Free fall. So now this uh, just refers to the motion of an object in the absence of air friction. So this relates to the uh, to the above uh, above definition. We're just talking about motion here. So this is the motion of this object through the air, with uh, if we ignore the effects of air friction. That means the only force 
or the only yeah the only force that's acting on it is gravity so we're only having the gravitational acceleration in this case and then the last concept that we look uh, we need to look at is uh, gravitational acceleration this is the most important part of this section so you need to be able to grasp this and understand it gravitational acceleration well now this is the constant acceleration of a free falling object so this means that is the acceleration of an object that's falling in the absence of uh, of air resistance or in the case we're ignoring air resistance and it's constant so let me just write down here constant acceleration so you need to remember that when we say constant we mean this force doesn't change for as long as you you are on on earth so it doesn't change it's the same and all objects ex, uh, experience the same gravitational acceleration it's the same for all objects constant acceleration for all objects gravitational acceleration is the same for all objects you need to remember that for all objects is the same so if there was no air or no air resistance a feather would fall at the same speed as a stone you understand because we're ignoring air resistance now and our acceleration is the same for all objects so now on earth on earth this acceleration is given by 9.8 meters per second downwards so you need to remember that acceleration is a vector quantity so you need to give the direction for that uh, for that quantity there and then now just to give you some perspective uh, on moon this acceleration is given by 1.6 meters per second so we have a small acceleration uh, when you get to 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 the moon so now the last point that i need to do, just talk talk about is x oh this is the fourth point sorry that's air resistance well i've been talking about it i hope you guys uh, get a sense of, of what we we mean by air resistance this is just the opposition or the opposition force opposition force to to the motion of an object uh, as it's falling uh, from as it's falling due, due to gravity so in real life we have some resistance to that motion you understand and that's referred to as air resistance but now when you're dealing with uh, this pro these problems or problems involving vertical projectile you need to ignore air resistance as long as they didn't state that there's air resistance just ignore the effects of air resistance when you're doing your calculations for this uh, for this topic so now the last part or the last thing that we want to talk about is just the formulas or the equations of motion that you need to remember on solving problems involving vertical projectile all right i hope you guys have made the no some notes let me just erase here and then write the equations that are very important for this for this uh, topic or for this part of the lesson equations so the first one vf equals to vi plus a change in time so i'm gonna write the meanings of all this uh, of all these variables at the end so now the second one vf squared equals to vi squared plus 2a change in y oh, and we're using the y because the motion is is vertical you need to always remember that why we're using that y uh, instead of some some people may ask you why are you using the change in y instead of change in x so that's the explanation that you can use uh, in cases like that or in the case where you get asked why you're using the y and then here we're gonna have change in y equals to vi change in time plus half a change in time squared and then the last equation of motion that you need to remember or just you need, you need to know because you're gonna get a formula sheet with all these equations so you just need to know uh, how to use them so it says change in y equals to vi plus vf divided by 2 multiplied by the change in time so now let me just explain what all these variables mean or all these letters mean where vf means final velocity of the object that's all vf and now vi 
means the initial velocity initial velocity of the object remember velocity is measured in meters per second velocity is measured in meters per second so you need to remember that the SI units are very important because you can lose marks from, from missing out your your SI units and now the change in Y means the displacement is the displacement in the y direction displacement which is measured in meters and then the la uh, no, the second last one is the acceleration which is the gravitational acceleration in this case because we're dealing with free falling objects so we're dealing with objects uh, moving due to the effects of gravity so acceleration or you can also refer to it as gravitational acceleration also given as g uh, and it's a constant value which is 9.8 uh, let me just write down here nicely 9.8 meters per second downwards this force is always acting downwards or this acceleration is always downwards always in the downward direction so you need to remember that uh, and then the last one is the change in time this is the time given in seconds oh and also another thing when you're writing your velocities remember to put in the direction because that's very important velocity is a vector quantity so you need to put in the velocities when you're dealing with uh, such concepts. Yeah, thank you guys very much for joining, guys. See you in the next les session or the next les lesson. Please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and also follow us on various social media platforms. Thank you.